Public number of COVID hospitalizations in Alberta is several factors lower than internal AHS figures show. Protests across Canada in solidarity with Palestine, but the Canadian press still tries to both sides opposition and support for the genocide. CTV News has a consistent anti-Palestinian bias in its reporting. Canadian-owned copper mine in Panama has sparked national protests that have shut down the country, and Israel is selling anti-missile systems to Finland for some reason. Good morning. It's Monday, November 13th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. First to Alberta, where Alberta Health Service has said that the number of people who've been reported to be hospitalized with COVID-19 is much higher than what is being reported publicly. This is according to documents obtained by CTV News. COVID-19 hospitalizations have doubled over the past month. In October, over the course of a single week, the government reported 320 hospitalizations in the province due to COVID-19. But internal documents that CTV obtained showed that over the same period, there were actually 898 people hospitalized. That is three times more than what the government is publicly reporting. This is totally messing with data related to COVID-19 positivity rates, making it really difficult to compare this time period with other periods during the pandemic. The doctors that CTV spoke to warned that without proper information, plus a lag in COVID vaccination may spell disaster for the winter. But for me, of course, this is just a continuation of a story that has been going on for a long time. And the people that this serves the most, it isn't actually to tell the population that everything's fine. That's a big part of it. But the people that this serves the most are the people who peddle disinformation related to the pandemic. Because here is an airtight example of negligence when it comes to data. The only question with that negligence is what do we say the reason for it is? And while I would say that it's incompetence and government trying to hide these figures so that they don't have to do anything, a conspiracy theorist might say, well, it's because COVID actually isn't real. Next to protest news. No, not the 4,000 people who came out yesterday in Quebec City to say that they want a tramway. Oh my God, we organized the most amazing thing here. I'm still just buzzing with how amazing yesterday was. But no. Rallies across Canada for Gaza. The Canadian press reported that there were thousands of people who protested all across Canada in, as they say, dozens of cities. The protests are on the heels of, quote, power outages, fuel shortages and shelling wreaked havoc on hospitals over the weekend and fierce clashes played out between Israeli troops and Hamas fighters, unquote. And, of course, a climbing Palestinian death toll. And, you know, I have to be honest, this is the first time that I've actually seen anything in writing about fierce clashes playing out between Israeli troops and Hamas fighters. Really makes it sound like a war Um, until you actually hear who's dying. It's not the Hamas fighters. It's not the Israeli soldiers. It's it's average people. It's children. It's babies. Actually, this weekend in the Al Shifa hospital. The Canadian press also said that there is a rally in Toronto at Christie Pitts organized by the United Jewish Appeal Federation of Greater Toronto. That rally was in support of Israel. And this article is the Canadian press and it's a national article. So it's talking about how there's protests all across Canada that are pro-Palestine. And then half the article is this single protest in Toronto that is supporting Israel. Now, let's be very clear. Putting it in this story like this is gross. They could have had a single article for the protest in Israel. Toronto for Israel, and then another article about the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who came out all across Canada in support of Palestine. But I also want to make it clear, too, that I do think it is personally gross that anyone would be demonstrating their support for Israel right now as they level Gaza, murder its inhabitants, and clear out anyone who isn't already murdered. One protester who had an aunt murdered by Hamas and a cousin who's been kidnapped said this to the Canadian press, quote, it's very clear that there is no ceasefire without our kidnapped people, unquote. The Canadian press did not ask her what she thinks about hostage safety, considering that conditions that Israel is subjecting all of Gaza to right now, nor did the Canadian press talk about the more than 1,000 Palestinians who are held without charge in detention in Israel. Are those people not hostages as well? Anyway, the article then pivots to people who were at the pro-Palestinian rallies, making sure that there is exact balance between the two sides. And then curiously, not mentioning at all the real issue here. 
that Canada consistently supports Israel, regardless of the number of children or non-combatants that are murdered. In the reporting, it's simply a tennis match for the Canadian press. But the balance is fake, as a single rally in Toronto, a rally that was smaller than the pro-Palestinian rally in the same city, stands in for an entire side, while rallies in nearly 50 cities across Canada are erased from the narrative. How many people came out yesterday? Was it thousands, like the Canadian press reports, or was it tens of thousands? Well, tens of thousands of people came out in Montreal, and tens of thousands of people came out in Toronto. But... You have to look at social media for that information. It's not in the Canadian press report. By the way, the Toronto Star reported that just 5,000 people came out in Toronto, but aerial videos show that probably there were 10 times that number. And I'd also want to note that we are seeing more and more union flags at these rallies. Keep that up, folks. Next, more news about media coverage and Israel's war on Palestine. The breach has found that CTV News has featured 62% more Israeli voices than Palestinian voices since October 7th. Why did Emma Paling from the breach choose CTV to analyze? It's because they have the widest viewership in Canada. They also regularly aired racist stereotypes about Arabs and rarely pushed back against Israeli military claims that are false. In fact, Paling even found that just over half of the Palestinian voices that they had on this show are identified, as in they're named. Just over half, 41% of the Palestinian people that they've had on their news are not identified at all by name. Meanwhile, the vast majority, as they say, that's quote unquote, of Israeli speakers were identified and often also had their familial or relational ties to Israel mentioned. This, of course, humanizes one side while leaving the other anonymous, a frame that Israel depends on to continue its devastating campaign against Gaza. The investigation focuses on CTV, but of course, they're hardly alone. This past weekend on Global News, in the setup for an interview with independent Jewish Voices activist Anna Lippmann, the interviewer said that, quote, thousands have died on both sides of the conflict, unquote which of course is a straight up lie. It takes at least 2,000 deaths to reach thousands territory. And for Israel, they're not there yet. Anyway, thankfully we have independent media, but my God, are we being fed such propaganda. Next, news from CBC's Pete Evans. Vancouver-based Quantum Minerals Limited owns a huge copper mine in Panama. Last month, they got a contract to continue operations of the open pit mine. But massive protests against the mine are causing the company some headaches. The mining activism has morphed into broader anti-government protests that Evans reports is costing the country $80 million per day. The environmental activists have been joined by other social movement activists, labor activists, and have gotten massive. People are challenging the mine's constitutionality in court, and there might even be a referendum vote on whether or not the company gets a contract extension. The mine isn't just massive in terms of size. It accounts for about 5% total of the country's GDP, and one of every 50 people in Panama is either indirectly or directly employed by the mine. The only larger contributor to the country's GDP is the Panama Canal. The company only has to pay the Panamanian government $375 million per year to operate the mine. They won, quote, the right to mine the site for at least the next two decades, unquote. As a result of the protests, schools have been shut down for more than a week. Protesters have blocked roads, ports, and, quote, other major infrastructure, unquote. But of course, the mine continues to operate. In the protests, two people have been shot dead. The company has promised to continue business as usual, despite the enormity of the protests. They've also lost more than 40% of their stock value since the protest started. So keep going, folks. (laughs) And finally, back to Israel. The IDF in Finland have inked a deal to sell Finland something called David's Sling Air Defense System. It's worth about 317 million euro. The sale, as announced by the Times of Israel, is a historic one between the two countries. Now, what is David's sling? Other than a biblical reference to the thing that David used to slay the giant Goliath, here's how the Times explains it. Quote, David's sling is one of the most advanced systems in the world for intercepting ballistic missiles, crude missiles, cruise missiles, aircraft, and drones. The David Sling system has demonstrated very high performance capabilities in war in a variety of challenging scenarios. Unquote. This missile defense system has been operating in Israel since 2017, but only actually intercepted its first rocket 
this past May. It shot down a rocket that had been fired from Gaza and another rocket that was fired in June. It's only been used once since Israel started its war against Hamas. Finland announced it intended to purchase the equipment the day after it joined NATO. Antti Kaikonen, Finland's Minister of Defense, said that it would allow their military to, quote, intercept targets at high altitude, unquote. Ukraine has asked to purchase it several times since Russia invaded, but Israel has refused. The Times of Israel doesn't explain why Finland thinks it needs this piece of equipment or where Finland thinks missiles are going to be launched towards the country that would necessitate having such an anti-missile system. Those are your headlines for Monday, November 13th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at sandyandnora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.